makers of Wrigley's Spearman Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Ash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. friends, Wrigley's Spearman Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half-hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mama Me, <laughs> in America is a wonderful thing to call a news effect. Greatest example of a freedom of speech. To give you more idea what the newspaper is like, sir. well... You remember our barber in the Castle of Mar in a little town in Italy, how he's talking and gossip and know everything and say what's going to happen tomorrow? <laughs> well, here, news the paper is like our barber only with the comic strip. <laughs> <laughs> but a wonderful thing about a news paper is the Sunday paper. I guess the reason they call it the Sunday paper is because it's a way about six pounds. <laughs> You read a pound a day and you take a Sunday off. <laughs> if you was to come here, you would get all the mixed up with the newspapers. They got so many editions. As a six star edition, that's to where we're winning the war. Then as a seven star, that's to one of the other side is a winner. <laughs> then the eight star, we're winning, and nine star, they're winning. Then there's a ten star. Last the paper of the day. And they want that you should hardly be able to wait for next day's paper so the headlines, nobody's a winning is a stable maker. <laughs> but still in all the mamma mia, I guess you know what's happening in the world. And when I'm, when I'm reading the papers, it's making me, make me very sad. So sad that sometimes I'm not even able to work. And so I'm going to go next door to my friend Pasquale, and I'm even a willing he should open up his big mouth and say, Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, what's the matter, little cabbage puss? <laughs> Sounding like a fellow who's a jumper from his airplane, open as a parachute, and to find out there's no strings attached. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, you know how it is. No, how is it? Well, uh, what's happening today? You can't live a normal life for one of you read what's going on in the papers. The war, the bombs. Oh, oh, so that's it. The Luigi trouble with you is that you read the wrong newspapers. Huh? That's all right. Hey, the newspaper you should read. It's from a Kansas City. Oh, sorry. How come are you reading a paper from a Kansas City? Hey, Luigi, look out of my ears. Do they look bigger to you? Mm, no, not the Sally. They go down from the top of your head to your jaw like always. <laughs> but why should your ears be bigger? Because I got the biggest idea I've ever got. And when Pasquale gets a big idea to fill up his brains and push out the ears. <laughs> Pasquale, what sort of a big idea you got? Come here, come here. Look at that. Take to the paper and open up to the farm of that. All right. Eh, 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 read, read. For sale. Three at the farm in the center of the United States. <laughs> All the improvements to water and electricity grow you on a vegetable. Self-sufficient, wonderful, hide away. But Scully, I'm going to understand what it's all about. Ooh, what a dumb skull. Luigi, I'm buying that farm. You are? Sure. Comes to the day they drop at the atom of bomb on a Chicago. But Scully's an old hair. He's living in the prairie. <laughs> Pasquale, how you can say such a thing? I'm a heard of people talking like that, but I'm a never believe they really mean it. Well, I mean it. That this farm is going to be a nice little place for two, me and my daughter Rose. But if you're willing to come along, I make it a for three. 
<laughs> what are you laughing at? But, Scrawley, you don't have to move one step. Rosa, she's away 250 pounds, right? So what? Sir? If any bombs is going to be dropped, sir. The first place in the country is going to be right here in the Chicago in the back of a road. <laughs> Wise the guy, eh? Wait, so someday you're going to be laughing from the other side of your nose. <laughs> hey, Pasquale, if you're serious, I'm going to want to talk with you. Here in America, I'm going to freedom. And that's no mean of freedom to run away. Well, uh, hooray for Patrick to Henry. <laughs> all right, all right. So you an American. What do you think is going to happen if you're living in a Kansas? You're going to become a Czechoslovakian? <laughs> but, Riley, I'm going to like this conversation. If you don't mind, I'm going to go to my night school. Go, oh, go, see a podcast. Just to remember, I'll try to give you advice. If you I'm going to go to one of your advice. All right, then take your choice. Do you want to be a dead hero or a live a coward? I don't know. All I know is that I don't want to be a Pasquale. You don't want to be a Pasquale? Listen! <laughs> The class would have started 15 minutes ago. I wonder what's keeping Miss Balding. No, oh, that's the first time I've eaten it ever, been late. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm hoping nothing is wrong with her. Hey, wait a minute, I got an idea. Let's show her what good poopers we are, huh? We're going to start the class anyway. That's yeah, what you guys Until she comes, I'm going to be the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> now, class, quiet, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Present, Mr. Horowitz? Here. Yeah. Uh, speak up louder, Mr. Horowitz, or I'll have to keep you off the clouds. With you, it's no bargain. <laughs> Good evening, class. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late, gentlemen, but I've just come from a very big school conference, and I have some news that concerns all of us. Oh, 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 oh. Well, the school board has decided to try a new idea. So once every three months, we're going to hold a gigantic city class meeting. Now, this Friday will be the first one, and it will be attended by every night school pupil in the city, over 10,000. Oh, what? 10,000? Okay. By the time they get through calling the rules, the meeting will be at church. <laughs> Please, Mr. Schultz. We feel that these city class meetings are of tremendous importance, especially in these times. It gives us all a chance to get together, to see and know each other, and to discuss our problems. Is there going to be some big speaker there, Miss Baldwin? No, no, that's just it. We don't want anyone outside the night school classes to participate. And, well, the board conferred a great honor on me. You, you mean you are going to see? No, but they thought I was doing so well with my class, and I had such good material that they gave me the honor of selecting one of you. Mm, they say you got good material, and I feel like a worn-out herringbone. <laughs> Uh, just a second. I'll accept no one's refusal to speak. After all, there's nothing to worry about. This meeting will be attended by people just like any one of you. Him, imagine if they are like Olsen. That's like sitting in front of 10,000 quiz kids with spitball. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please let me get to my point. Now, I've decided that you tell me what you would speak about, and I'll make my selection. Mr. Basco, what would you like to talk about? Huh? Well, I... Honestly, Miss Spalding, if I'm had something to say, I would have talked about it. We'll get back to you. Mr. Schultz? Well, as long as you ask me, I'm going to tell you. I would say, why are we being such high taxes? And why are we getting so little for the dollar? Yeah. What's happening in Washington? And I mean D.C. And if All I had right, anything Mr. to do with it, All right. we, we would immediately declare a moratorium. All right, Mr. Schultz. All if right. It was the first day of the new version of Congress. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Schultz. I may use you. It's no use, Miss Baldy. I'm already too pooped for Friday. Mr. <laughs> Horowitz, have you any ideas? Well, Miss Spaulding, it seems to me it might be good to say that the best way to keep our senses in this world is to be strongest within ourselves and to be strong to those who look to us for guidance, our families. The family must be stronger than ever. That's a very good thought, Mr. Horowitz. Mr. Olsen. Then, Miss Balding, as you know, I could talk fluently on a thousand subjects. <laughs> Maybe I could start with my analysis of world events. Then I could summarize the glorious history of America. Then I would forecast the future. And during the next hour or two, I would answer questions from the audience. Then there would be a short recess while everybody went home and got their gun. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, 
Well, Mr. Basco, we're back to you again. Miss Sporting, I think what everybody said is very, very good. I wish I had such a good idea. Well, I'm sure you have. Surely you read the newspapers and discuss things with people? Yeah, yeah, I'm a disgusting. Sure, I'm a disgusting. Thank you, Pasquale. He's a telling me he's a moving away from Chicago, so when Adam Bomb is a come, he's a no here. Imagine. He's a so sure that Adam Bomb is going to be dropped, he's a never even a figure out how you stop it. <laughs> so I told him, I'm going to come here to run away. I'm going to want to be a Pasquale. Freedom is something I'm going to hold on to. I'm not going to explain a freedom, but, but maybe I'm not going to tell him what is the meaning to me. But what a good is it? He's going to want to listen. He's Mr. Basco, I... you're going to be the speaker. Mm-hmm. But I'm and the subject of your talk will be what freedom means to me. return to life with Luigi, we'd like to say a word about chewing enjoyment. When you're busy at your job or working around your home, it's a satisfaction to chew on a smooth, delicious piece of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. It really is. That good, easy chewing goes right along with your work. Helps keep you feeling right. It makes the job seem easier and pleasanter. The refreshing, long-lasting flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint adds to your enjoyment and leaves a fresh, clean taste in your mouth. So for chewing enjoyment, and the delicious taste treat, always keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. Get a few packages when you go to the store. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. So, Mamma Mia, you can see what a big honor is given to me. I'm speaking in front of 10,000 pupils in the biggest city class. And I'm afraid. Just as it told me not to be afraid. I'm sure to close my eyes and imagine there's only 9,000. <laughs> anyway, I was start to write my speech, and it was the hardest to put down on the paper what I thought in my head. I'm a looked up at the word the freedom in my 10 cent dictionary. It's to say, freedom must see liberty. So I'm going to look up a liberty, and it's to say, liberty, see independence. <laughs> I'm going to look up independence, and it says, independence, to see democracy. <laughs> Mamma mia, I'm going to think they use that word, the freedom, to advertise all the other words in a dictionary. <laughs> anyway, I was starting to write, when all of a sudden a man I'm going to never see before is he come into my store. How do you do, sir? Oh, hello. Come on, come on in. Is it some antique do you want to buy? Not today. My name is Byron, and I represent the Crusade for Freedom. Oh, that's just funny. My name is Abasco. I'm going to represent the same thing. <laughs> oh, then you've already been told about the petition. What's the petition? I thought you was uh, meant to buy my speech. Well, perhaps I better explain, sir. The Crusade for Freedom is a big national movement, and our aim is to get the signature of every American on our freedom scroll. Excuse me, you talk very nicely. You was born in America, huh? Well, yes, Massachusetts. My oh. father was born in Rhode Island, and my grandfather was born there, too. <laughs> Mamma mia. You was in America a hundred years before you was born, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Basco... Can I can I see one of those, uh, those uh, petitions, uh, Mr. Byron? Why, certainly. That's what we want you to do. Read it. Here. All right. Uh, declaration, I believe the sacredness, the dignity, divine right to pledge you. Aggression of Freedom Bell, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Harold Assassin, Cordella Hall. Mamma <laughs> mia, I'm better not to sign a dissipator. Why not? I'm a gotta leave a room for Harry S. Truman. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Basco. Here, just sign your name. Oh, please. sure, sure. Luigi Basco. There. I only wish I had a middle name or two, so it would be more of a me to put down. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Basco. You know, after we've collected all the signatures, these freedom scrolls are going to be permanently enshrined in the base of a huge freedom bell in Berlin. My name is too, huh? Well, of course. Eisenhower, Stassen, Holle, Basco, Truman. <laughs> hey, that sounds pretty good, huh? Well, <laughs> you sound very enthusiastic, Mr. Basco. 
Say, I wonder if you put this poster in your window. Oh, sure, I'm a glad to. And perhaps you could take a few of these scrolls and get some signatures. Well, I, I would like to collect signatures. But I'm a got a speech to make, and it's for Friday night. Oh, how far have you gotten in your speech? Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, go on. If I'm a go on, I'm a fall off of the page. <laughs> That's all I'm a got to. Oh. You see, it's hard for me to... Wait, Wait, I'm going to collect the signatures for this crusade. And then I'm going to ask the people what they say, and then I'm going to put it all in my speech. A wonderful idea. That way you can kill two birds with one stone. Huh? You can kill two birds with one stone. If you don't mind, I'm just to collect the signatures. I'm going to like it to kill birds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just an expression, Mr. Basco. Well, goodbye, sir, and thank you very much for your help. And, uh... Oh, yes, I'm sure you'll read up on this literature and get the people you ask to read the same thing, huh? It's important, you know. If they want to make a voluntary contribution, they may, too. Oh, sure, sure. And I don't know what I'm going to get you hundreds of names. I'm sure you will. You've got the script. Well, goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Hey, wait, wait. Maybe you'd do me a big favor, huh? Certainly. What is it? Do you want to be the first to sign <laughs> Mr. Swally, Mr. come here. I've got a wonderful thing for you to sign. It's a very oh, important... Oh, wait, that... wait, to back up. You just went it through a purple light. <laughs> purple light? Yes, that's the red light that should turn the blue from being past so fast. <laughs> take easy. Start from the finish and go backwards, the nice and the slow. But Swally, you and me don't have to argue you no more. You read this, and then you'll be happy to sign this petition. Sign? Luigi, you brains, the flu, you cooper, maybe? I'm never signing nothing. Since I've been in America, the only thing I ever sign is a check. It's a break of my heart every time I do it. Yeah, but Luigi, it was I wouldn't have signed the Declaration of Independence if a George Washington himself had handed me as a fountain of pen. I'd stop a suffering in my face with that pamphlet. Even if this is the most important thing you could sign? Who knows what's important? All I know is... That Keep it quiet, to shut your face, and to stay out of trouble. That's my slogan, and you're stuck with it. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, you're the first one I ask, and I'm going to start off the bed. Listen, I wouldn't... Uh, wait till we hear. I'm not a hard man at the bargain with that. I'm even willing to forget that insult about you don't want to be no Pasquale. i tell you what I do. I'm going to be very happy to put my signature on your paper if you put your signature on a certain paper I got. All right, Mr. Pasquale, what a paper you want us to sign? Marriage license with my daughter, Rosa. That's nothing to do, Mr. Pasquale. What's the matter you got to do with the freedom? Plenty. You got it, so Rosa wants it. <laughs> well, what do you say, my son? Just to say that the magic word, yes, and I buy that a farm in Kansas, and we all are going to live it together. Three happy little newlyweds. Answer is a no, Pasquale. N O O O O. Stop, stop. I know how to spell a no. It's only three O's. <laughs> okay, Mr. Bachelor, if that's the way you feel, forget the petition. My signatures are never going to leave my fingers. All right, then I'm going to get others. I don't need you. Everybody else is going to be happy to sign. All right, go, go. I'm still willing to give you a chance. If you don't get your signatures, that place in the Kansas is still open. All right. And you're going to see how wrong you are, because nobody wants to be a Pasquale. Oh, listen, you... Ah, here's a wonderful place. Here, yeah, right in the middle of the park. Everybody's a passer by. Mamma mia, I'm a nervous. Well, here I go. How do you do, lady? I'm a represent the Crusader for Freedom. I already gave. Oh. How do you do, sir? I'm a represent the Crusader. I already signed. Oh, that's a nice. Hey, excuse me, mister. It's nine o'clock. But I'm going to want the time, Mama. That's so funny. I don't think of those are people even heard what I'm said. I don't think of they sign anything. I'm going to ask the people on the benches if they ain't moving. Excuse me, lady. Here you are. Any sense? 
But, lady... That's all I have. But, the lady... Oh, a body can't even have some tea. Wait, sit down, Adore. Oh, excuse me, I didn't mean to bump her. Hey, mister. Mister, maybe you... Sorry, I'm in a hurry. But you don't know what to... Oh. Mister, maybe you sign. Uh, Mamma mia, before I'm open my mouth, everybody is closed. <laughs> hey, pardon me, sir. I'm going to get a petition is for you good. Let uh, me be the judge of that. All right, to be judge, but to stand still. <laughs> What's the matter with you people? I'm going to get the most important thing today. Crusade for freedom. And you know hey, what it's saying, you don't... You mean me, officer? Yeah, you. Get off that soapbox. Soapbox? So what is soapbox? I'm not standing on anything. You know what I mean. This is a peaceful park, and we don't want any speeches made. I'm not making a speech. Look, get going before I take your name down. All right. All right, I'll take my name down. What? Yeah, I'm willing to do anything. I'm going to give you my name, and you give me yours. <laughs> How you doing? No good. I'm got only two more names beside yours. In five hours? <laughs> oh, that's the public, all right. People they don't want to listen, or or they're afraid, or they don't care. Well, I'm going off. So long and good luck. So long and, uh, uh, Mister. Excuse me, but I'm in a hurry. Maybe you sign. I don't sign anything without my lawyer. Well, uh, good. I bring him here. I'm gonna get a two signature. <laughs> Very funny. Uh. Mister? What do you want? Don't run away. I'm going to want to match no cigarettes and I'm going to know the time. I'm going to represent the crusader for freedom. Not interested. But the maybe, maybe if I'm explaining to you. I'm a guy who figures things out for himself. But if you want to waste your time, well... Well, you see, this the crusade... Well? Nothing. I can see you're not interested. Excuse me, lady. Yeah. So Too busy. busy. I know. And now, fellow night school students, it gives me great pleasure to introduce one of our teachers. Miss Spaulding, teacher of the high second group in Lincoln Night School, who will introduce the main speaker, one of her students. Thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I told the school that I was greatly honored when they selected my class, and I think they will not have failed in their choice, for I'm sure we shall hear a very interesting, understanding, and sincere talk on the subject, What Freedom Means to Me. I am proud to present to you one of our own, Mr. Luigi Basco. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a feel very bad to come here and make a fool of myself, my teacher, and all of you. I'm a very sorry I was asked, and I'm a never should have taken a job. I'm a no speaker, I'm not going to make a speech, and I'm a got to no speech. Oh, Mr. Basco. <laughs> Maybe I should have changed what I said a little bit. When Mrs. Spaulding gave me responsibility, I started to let it speak. Something happened. And I was a stop. So instead of saying I'm a got to no speech, let me say, I'm a got a beginning, I'm a got to no middle, and I'm afraid of the sin. Maybe you're interested. Maybe I should have told you what happened. So now you want to know what the crusaders are standing for. Don't you think everybody should have signed this? Maybe people, they take everything for granted. They don't realize what they got. To. Like a fresh air, cut it off. And I see what's to happen. You see what I mean? I thought I knew. I mean, I thought I... Well, what's the deal? He's all a mixed up. Ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Luigi, come here. I feel better. It was a fine speech you made. I'm proud of you. 
Please. What do you call it? Please, please, Pasquale. It was the bad speech. I let everybody down. Mr. Basco, Mr. Basco, why did you run off? I'm sorry, Miss Spalding. I should have never have done what I did. What are you talking about, Mr. Basco? You did the most wonderful thing possible. What? Come here. Hey, hey. So what's to happen? What's the little bit of passed around? Hey, that's to look like my, like my petition. That's right. As soon as you finish, everybody has to sign one. Why, I think they've already collected $300 in voluntary contributions. Oh, my, my, my. You mean everybody here is going to sign? Yes, that's right. You've got 10,000 signatures. 10,000. Oh, how wonderful. Hey, you see, Pasquale? Now, what do you say right, after... Right, Luigi. You don't holler around me. But I said it before, I meant You mean you really were proud of me? Luigi was one of the greatest speeches I ever heard. It made me see a few things are different. I'm going to move in the county. You mean you don't want to be a Pasquale? That's the right. I'm gonna be a Luigi. And now, Life with Luigi takes you to New York, where we hear from General Lucius D. Clay, National Chairman of the Crusade for Freedom who has transcribed a few words he would like to say to Luigi Basco. Luigi, you give me a great hope, and you also fill me with considerable pride. It has not taken you long to learn what America really stands for. You have also found that because you believe in its ideals, you can reach the hearts and minds of its peoples. Thank you very much, Luigi, and the many thousands of other volunteers who are undertaking the crusade for freedom. But thank you especially, Luigi, for your faith in your new country and your belief in freedom. Mamma Mia, now you see why America is a wonderful country and is worth the fighting for. Because only here is it possible for a little immigrant like you, son, to hear from a great general and a great American like General Clay. It's like I once wrote to you. In America, everything is possible. Your loving son, Luigi Basco, the little immigrant. Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they want to remind you that a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum gives you long-lasting enjoyment at a very small cost. You can treat your whole family to Wrigley's Spearmint, and you can enjoy it often every day with almost no effect on your pocketbook. Then, too... Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is a wholesome, healthful treat because chewing is good for teeth and digestion. So when you're doing your shopping, be sure to include a few packages of delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Treat your family often to chewing enjoyment. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Dermott. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Schiff as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olsen. A portion of this program is transcribed in New York. Music is under the direction of Lud Glasson. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.